Hello folks and welcome to the Saltly Creations channel. Today I'm going to be showing you folks how to, well, prime a miniature without having any priming on hand. By any means, select spray cans, airbrush, you know, rattle cans. Here, the model I'm showing before you is a WizKids Dragonborn. And well, pretty much what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be painting it and just with regular old style. A good old simple little paintbrush that has been through so much by using a base of Abaddon Black. I'm just going to be painting this whole miniature first with a black paint coat. It's just going to take a good amount of time before I can finalize it here. Now this is a recording on top of the video in case of things look a little wonky. But uh, I find it easier for me to not only paint but to speak with an overlay on top of the video so it's easier for me to better provide you with the information you need instead of trying to paint and then focus on what I'm supposed to be doing followed by whatever's going on here. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this method of um, what is commonly known for miniature painting as zenithal highlighting is that this is going to show you your proper, like, highlights everywhere and where the light value is coming from, depending on how heavy you implemented the white on top of the black base coat. So as you see, what I'm currently doing here is I am just applying a very thin, a little too thin, whoops, uh, amount of black on top of the miniature. So that way it gives it kind of like a nice little watery, runny texture below already because for some reason the WizKids miniature primers are I don't know what they use but they are just very like glossy they have this weird glossy finish no matter what you put on top of it but when you apply the GW base co uh, coats on top of it that are not like washes and stuff they're very they have a nice matte finish so it's going to dull down that glossiness after what I'm just doing here is I'm applying the first the first black coat. I'm just applying it everywhere through all the nooks and crannies I can see. And then once that dries, I will apply a second coat. Uh, generally, with these little D&D &D models, you can just do this because it already has a base coat. So you're just covering that with a different base coat. Now, if you were to uh, do the same method with something that isn't already primed or at least takes paint really well like maybe some 3d printing models it's gonna leave a weird finish so let's say you're painting a games workshop warhammer model just with the paint no primer it's gonna leave this weird sort of like uneven coat maybe a little glossy because the plastic's still showing under but it's manageable now once you start slapping more paint on top of it it's gonna be a little funky at first the paint's going to have a little weird time trying to grab onto the model itself, especially if your paint is very thinned down with water or a thinning agent. But yeah, pretty much pretty much here I'm just trying to coat the entire model and everything. I did, realized I forgot to uh, trim off some of the mold line from the model. Whoops. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so pretty much uh, trimming the mold line is all those little jagged lines sticking out from the model that aren't actual detail. They're just excess from when the model was created in a two-cast uh, system. So two casts is in, there's like two little molds and you slap them together and you fill this little cave, if you will, with your epoxy resin or 3D resin or whatever. Not 3D resin, because that's a special printer made for that. So just regular resins, plaster, everything like that. It's pretty much what you see commonly in in um, like a model companies, uh, movies and stuff, where they are making the masks and whatnot. they got to trim that off so it doesn't ruin the overall look. Wow. I'm going quite vigorous with this black paint, am I? <laughs> oh, I missed a little crack over there, didn't I? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, this, this portion is just going to take some time. Um, usually I would speed this up with a, you know, a little program magic. You know, speed it up a bit. 
but I just wanted to do this in real time to show you how long it's going to take to cover the entire model, brush only, with your paint. So it's it's going to take a good it's going to get take a good amount of time. But if you're if you're new to uh, painting miniatures and stuff, and you wanna you wanna have a nice base coat, this this is your spot. This, however, is Zenithal highlighting, which is what's going to be followed by a white, whitish gray paint later. But um, you don't have to do that Zenithal highlighting, as I mentioned earlier. It's just really to emphasize where your light values and lighter hues are going to be striking on the upper surfaces of the model. So that way, if you're using like a thin color, not necessarily black, but like anything not not a dark color, since it's going to blend in with the black, unless that's what you're going for. Um, any color you apply on top of it is going to be lighter on the upper parts of the model that have all that white still, and fairly darker where all that black still there. This is a method that's commonly used in the miniature painting stuff that I've seen everywhere, and everybody has a different way of doing it, using this skill, and applying it to what they're working on. So, other other people would be like using it for for really just coloring the miniature, working on it. My I'm at a loss at words at the moment. I had a brain fart. My bad. Right. Right. I just remember what I was trying to say. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just doing the finishing touches up on here. Uh, blah, 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 Zenithal highlighting. It's a cool little trick for easy highlights. But, um, oh, yeah, right. Zenithal highlighting doesn't necessarily have to be black and white for your monochrome, monotone coloring. In fact, it can actually be different colors with two different shades. So, let's say you want to paint... A space marine, uh, you know, the bland, boring ultramarines that uh, are everywhere. They're 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 poster child, if you will. <laughs> For them, you would do your blue base coat and then a very light base coat on top of it. So that way, you have a already easy trick for a blue space marine. You just have to uh, apply color over that very light blue, so you can blend it together well. And then add on your other colors from there. Or, like, you're painting a demon, you spray it, like, red first. Like, a very, very dark red, almost like a burgundy. And then you slap on a slightly lighter dark red. Maybe, like, a... Mahogany? No, is mahogany darker? or uh, Let's just say super dark red base coat, very light red on top. And then you have yourself a red-styled zenithal highlight. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me so yeah that's that's pretty much it I'm still I'm still applying the paint on top of it it's been about I want to say like six minutes of me just applying this black base coat on this small I want to say like three centimeter no that's actually kind of small and so just Dragonborn miniature. It takes a bit when you're doing it just with a brush. As previously mentioned, it's going to take a bit. But now, we're on to the Korax white part. Here's the fun part. The paint is dry with a little bit of movie magic, because I paused it. Let it dry for a bit. So I'm going to use is I'm going to use your standard makeup brush. Um, makeup brushes are perfect for dry brushing due to the fact that they already have the soft bristles, they apply the paint on easy, and it's not too rough on the model. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be hitting everything that is atop the miniature with a Corax White dry brush. So that's going to be like the top of the head, the shoulder pads, the top of the gloves, the top of the weapon, uh, part of the upper parts of the knee pads. And then all of the gravel below that isn't too close to the model because I want to give it like a nice overcast shadow. So yeah, as me just slapping that brush on, just 
emphasizing the brighter white on each part. So I know where the gray is because the gray is going to mix in with the black since it's not, since I'm not adding more white highlights to it. It's just going to blend together with the black, giving it a nice even, even color. So it lets me know where the highest protruding tops of the model are, which are going to be very bright when I'm highlighting everything. The neutral, neutral plane where it's going to, you know, it's more facing towards the sun, but it's not going to be as dark. And then all of the recesses are just black. So yeah, I'm just slapping on the brushes, just going downward, so that way the brush is catching whatever is within view from the sunlight. So I'm doing like an overcast style with the light I'm currently just using that's facing downward. I'm just slapping it. Wow. Yeah. So the reason why it looks a little more rough with the dry brushing than previously is because this dry brush I've had for like a year now, I've used it on almost everything that I'm doing for dry brushing. I'm going to have to buy a new one at some point. But yeah, but makeup brushes, really good. They last a good while, and if you treat them right, clean them well. But yeah, just, just adding that white on top of the black, you can already see the huge impact that it has. And, and how much it emphasizes where your light values are going to be when you start painting it with actual colors. Or, this is actually a super easy trick on how to make yourself a, like a stone statue. Like, you could just slap on other colors to, and actually give it that stone look. So, like, you can stick with the white, maybe add some blue into it, maybe add some greens here and there, spattled about. Add some, like, nice verdant aquamarines here and there, and you got yourself, like, a nice-looking old stone statue that's probably been way too long alone by the seashore yeah actually oh that sounds kind of fun for a color scheme now that i think about it so i'm just touching it up regular and yeah and just add, adding the finishing highlights for this very mundane super easy not very impressive <laughs> although it, it could be impressive for some people uh, yeah easy zenithal highlight which can honestly just be turned into something else just by doing this dry brushing is super fun and super easy that's all you need to do you just dab your paintbrush on a paper towel and just get off as much paint as you can so you're just dusting it and there you have it you got yourself your nice little easy zenithal highlight with brushes only I just want to say thank you for stopping by and watching this video. Uh, it's been a pleasure working on some things for you folks. And within closing of the video, I just want to say thank you for all your support. Feel free to check out all my other videos. You can uh, check out my Instagram at Saltly Creations down in the comment section below. Not a comment section of the video. Other than that, you folks have a great day. And just just stay cool. Take care of yourself, depending on where you live. Have a good one.